Okay, so I'm going to talk about the third uh, components of thermal analysis technique. Uh, I just talked about DSC and TGA, and the third one technique is a DMA. DMA is a dynamic mechanical analysis. So the, the name from the dynamic, D, okay, D, dynamic, Dynamic means essentially you are doing the uh, oscillation. So the, the samples are being uh, changed at different kind of frequency of oscillation. So the frequency in the unit of hertz but that frequency, essentially inverse of the frequency, so essentially time, so it is related to time scale. Because the polymer movement is depending on the time scale of the observation, and so it's a, sometimes it depends on the what kind of frequency do you use to uh, choose. So this one is essentially you oscillate a sample, and so t for typical uh, example is a bending is an example so, so you are essentially put your sample here and uh, let's say you clamp this sample by the sample clamping clamping bar so this is a hold in place and then there is a, another one that is a, a probing bar and this one is connected to the motor so this one goes up and down so you're moving this sample essentially bending up and then uh, but th now because of if you let it go you cannot do that so you actually this one is also being clamped down as well so you're making this one going bending up and then bending it down you're going going back and vice versa, going back and forth. So essentially you are doing the oscillation of amplitude. Right? So you can you can think about as time goes on and this is a time and this is your amplitude to the oscillation. And then you uh, and then just the motor you can you can try to do it. And then if your sample is fully elastic, just like a rubber band, the amplitude and the, the, the stress is in phase, okay? And that's uh, when materials are uh, purely elastic. Uh, and this is for the elastic case. When the sample is purely viscous, and then you are actually, when you're seeing the stress, here is where they are seeing the maximum. So, you're seeing here, 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 here. So what I'm trying to show here is this maximum position, there's no differences. And this, this maximum position in the stress for the viscous uh, material, uh, this is a stress. I'm talking about two extremes, and this is a one that is a component that is essentially 90 degree out of phase. And this is the one that uh, the elastic uh, stress component, and then and this is a viscous component, and then we. The stress response is related to what is called the storage modulus. And we are using the prime, and E double prime is what is called the loss modulus. So they are measuring this uh, E as a, as a ratio between stress divided by strain and then they, there's a theory behind this which need a uh, further elaborate time to explain it to you let's just say that 
uh, dynamic mechanical analysis, you are measuring the modulus, but you are measuring modulus in in-phase modulus and out-of-phase modulus. In-phase, out-of-phase, which is a phase angle of 90 degrees, that's, that's why it's called the storage modulus, and that's why it's called the uh, uh, loss modulus. Okay, so you're yeah, measuring those. So and then the M is mechanical. A is analysis. Okay, so you are essentially moving the sample in and out and the measuring the essentially the deformation, which is called the amplitude, and you are measuring the stress and the relationship between the amplitude. That so essentially uh, becomes the factor called the strain, the relationship between strain and the stress uh, relationship. You are able to uh, find out this storage modulus and loss modulus. And also uh, people are interested in actually measuring the sample of uh, glass transition temperature. Most people also put it in a tan delta, which is a E double prime divided by E prime. Just a, another way, and then sometimes they just looking at a, for a peak in the tan delta as a measure of for Tg. So uh, here is an example of a, actually a better drawing than my one. This is a single cantilever beam. You put green is your sample. This is your stationary clamp, and this is a movable clamp. They go up and down, and then they essentially how much of the uh, bending uh, is moving it, which is a, where it's an in-phase component and out-of-phase component when you're trying to move the sample. Yeah, up and down. And this is the usual how the sample looks like, and uh, you need to make a little uh, bar-like sample uh, at least. So you need a you need a substantially more um, larger amount of the sample than the DSC or TGA experiment. Uh, the sample goes to this uh, little chamber, and then this also whole thing will essentially go up, and and then enclose. So this one will go up. This thing will essentially go up and enclose. And to control the temperatures. The one thing that is uh, I like about this uh, DA, uh, uh, the DMA is not only you can change the temperature, But also, you can also change relative humidity. Here's an example of the nylon 6. Uh, and the, you, you are looking at the temperature window from the 0 to 100 degrees C. And the, if you look at the nylon, C, nylon 6, the melting temperature, is about 220 degrees C. So you are well below the melting temperature, but uh, by heating it up, uh, you are looking at certain kind of a transition. So here's a storage modulus, so E prime. And uh, if you look at that, uh, when you are at 80% relative humidity chamber and you, and you change uh, and you heat your sample, you will see this modulus is decreasing it and reach to some kind of value. Uh, when you are at 50% uh, relative humidity or 20% relative humidity, you are seeing that uh, the modulus is persist to, to a higher value, then eventually it comes down like that. Right? So that's uh, essentially mechanical property, how things are became softened up, and uh, your storage modulus or elastic modulus is decreasing it. And so this is has something to do with a, a, I guess a softening. We also call it glass transition temperature. And uh, the but it's hard to see this uh, from this sliding, uh, uh, this continuity change of the elastic storage modulus. So sometimes the people actually like to put it as a tan delta, 
tan delta is once again E double prime divided by E prime, and then 80 percent. You are seeing this as a peak around here. Although it's abroad, uh, it's a 32 degrees C is uh, their temperature, whereas uh, when you are heating it up to and you are at the 50 relative humidity, it went up to the 67 degrees C. So uh, you can see that not only the you can not only measure the TG, but you are uh, you can see that how the relative humidity can impact the glass transition temperature. And this is uh, actually how exactly why we are actually spreading the water when you do the ironing. When you do the ironing the cloth, actually the water is actually is not a solvent, but is actually good enough to kind of soften up uh, the material. When the particularly uh, something that is a more like a hydrogen bonding capable polymer, such as a nylon or even polyester. Uh, by kind of sp even cotton too, okay. You can you can spray the water, and water is essentially kind of uh, works as a mild stabilizer, so that you can uh, reduce the TG uh, by having having this water as a some plasticizing effect. So that's what called the is a that's that's the example shown up here. Uh, sample geometries I want to using they are using this what is called a cantilever the terminologies uh, there is a, something called a single cantilever and a double uh, dual cantilever the one that's showing up here is a single cantilever and the one that's showing up here is a double cantilever and uh, this is also the three point bending and uh, they can also put the sample between uh, two <coughs> They can they can put the sample between uh, two shear plate, and that's what we call the shear sandwiches. And this is for the bending, and then this is a dual cantilever, and so on. And also you can put your sample in a more like a, what they call tension. This is good for a sample looks like films. Okay, so when you have a thin films, you can cut the film strips and can put it in, and you can essentially this this one is going up and down. But this is the one that moving part. And the one outside is essentially the one that uh, in the stationary part. So these are the depending on the different geometries, uh, they are they want to use uh, different types of uh, sample geometry for their experiment. And I actually also given to the another example. This is also one example that I like to show it to you. And this example is essentially showing the uh, the temperature ranges. This is also quite typical. It's not relative humidity control, but this is showing the actually minus 80 to this temperature. So DMA, for some reason, that is very uh, used where the DSC cannot uh, give a reliable measurement for something in the colder temperature ranges. So it's very common for DMA. Uh, to be having a liquid nitrogen cooling source and think they can go down to the temperature much lower. And here is another example of going down to minus 10 degrees C. So this is a minus 100 degrees C. So this is obviously using the liquid nitrogen tank connected with a DMA. And then you can looking at much lower temperatures uh, ranges, and then looking at the TGs of the sample. We are not looking for the TM here because once you sample is melted, they can flow. So we are really looking at the TG. And, uh, and there is also what they call the soft TG relaxation. And this is uh, one of the specific research area, okay, soft TG relaxation. There's a lot of uh, different motions. Sometimes uh, there are motions, even uh, temperature lower than Tg, uh, that uh, can be found in some polymers. And then, and the DMA is uh, really the essential tool allow you to do that. The polycarbonate, for example, is the one that is uh, some more uh, different types of sub-Tg relaxation. So they call it alpha, beta, Gamma relaxations, 
And um, as far as I remember, the alpha is uh, essentially Tg. But the one that uh, uh, the, the second uh, Tg, close to the Tg, uh, but it's uh, lower than Tg is on uh, beta. The one that further down, uh, the lower, is a uh, gamma relaxation. They just uh, continue to call it that way. At any rate, and so this one shows the example of where the TG of SBR rubber, and then you put down the, the SBR with the carbon black, you essentially increase the TG to so much, right? So by, by putting the carbon black, you can see that glass tension temperature of a steady and butadiene rubber is increasing it as an example. And finally, I, I chose to show you this figure, not only the temperature ranges, but also the because of this. You can, looking at this, this is a, you can see that the elastic modulus decrease, or actually loss modulus is showing a little peak and then, then decrease, or tan delta is also, uh, can be shown as a peak. And each temperature is actually, uh, Tg can be defined by the, uh, essentially looking at this temperature, as a Tg by uh, elastic modulus drop onset, which is a minus 30 degrees C, whereas also you will see the peak in the uh, E double prime, which is a loss modulus, is also close to the minus 30 degrees C. And you can also put this uh, tan delta peak, uh, which is a uh, tan delta once again is uh, E double prime divided by E prime. If you plot that, you will see more like a peak, and the the, uh, the Tg is now is a minus two degrees C. So what I'm saying here is, when you doing this the DMA, the Tg is can be has to be defined by, you have to say that define by either E prime, E double prime, or tan delta. You have to designate in your experiment section, and the most, most common choice is tan delta because that's easier to see, but some people actually like, like the E, e prime uh, uh, drop as, as well. the change of the onset temperature, and then this, you have to really designate which temperature it is you are using it to. 